Mix them up, let's start the show. We're digging in with Trey. 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 We're digging in with Trey today. Yeah. Well, I know the game's played on the ice, but to win to really have success in the NHL, you have to have quality people. And the Hurricanes player that I'm about to award the shovel to uh, for the dig-in player of the month of January, you, you won't meet a better person. Okay, so we established that. He, he led the defense in every category. Uh, when you look at production and the, and the goals, the assists, plus minus, um, plays a ton of minutes. Uh, he's a former dig-in guest, I, I, I'm really thrilled. Um, to award the shovel to Brady Shea. He's been a terrific hurricane. Uh, at the end of the month, actually, Rod Brindamore called him one of the most underrated uh, players in the game, and I agree. And you win with great people. Speaking of great people, we're going to talk to Brady Shea in, in just a second. Thanks to the great people at Casual Elegance Designs. Interior, I, well, let's hope that my interview is better than that. <laughs> Putting together and visualizing interior spaces just for you. Casual Elegance Designs, NC.com. Give them a look. You'll never regret it. Uh, before we uh, jump in with Brady, the great Minnesotan salted the earthian that he is, probably just made up my own word, a reminder to check out digandtrip.com for uh, our merchandise line. It's always expanding. Uh, several of the items uh, we will make charitable foundations, so you know that should be a vehicle for you to take a look. Um, but sir, there's some really good stuff on there. And continue to rate our podcast, all audio platforms, as well as YouTube. Uh, without further ado, yeah, I'm pumped about this. The Canes Dig In Player of the Month for January, Brady Shea. Well, Brady, you're a nice hoodie. No, thank you. Uh, you're a former guest. I, I'm really proud about this because you really earned the shovel. Um, where do I start? I'm going to start with, in the come from behind uh, win in Columbus, you had a couple of goals January 1st. So that yeah. kick starts your month. We talked after the game on television about your skills coach. Well, let's dig into it. Let's dig okay. into the particulars of from your feet to your hands in Minnesota, the guy, yep. and what, what you worked on. Yeah, tons of stuff. I mean, I think that I've always had pretty good feet where I've always been able to, you know, skate out of trouble. but. Um, this summer I really worked on stick handling, kind of getting pucks through from the point. Um, I think that's a huge asset. If, it doesn't even really matter how hard it is, just to get accurate and get through bodies is a huge, huge thing that I worked on. Um, being a little more elusive on my skates, I think that's, uh, that's helped me. I think the game's getting so fast. I mean, everyone can skate, so you got to have a little shiftiness in your game. Um, but overall, just uh, trying to get better every day in the summer is what I've been doing. Is, is shifting it? How do you define being more elusive? Yeah, I, I, we worked on a bunch of like going back for pucks in the D zone. Um, I feel like I can do it more, but you know, maybe giving a guy you know, a little fake here and there to get him to bite and then go the other way, kind of open up some space for you. Uh, skating up the ice, you know, maybe looking one way and passing the other, or trying to sell a guy that you're going to shoot and walk around him. So, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Definitely something I've been working on and want to keep working on. Good definition. I mean, anybody that's been following Digging In knows for me the word elusive means the elusive swordfish hunt. <laughs> <laughs> In uh, Miami. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Um, you and Brett Pesci. I, I, on our television, I think you, you said to Abby Labar before the year, maybe both said it, if, if you were stranded somewhere, Tom Hanks cast away for 24 <laughs> hours or on an island, you, know, you both picked each other, your personality, sense of humor. Yep. How important is, or what, how can a great friendship be an intangible that really helps a partnership on the ice? It's huge. I mean, I think, um, like you said, me and Brett are very similar in personality-wise, and um, we love hanging out with each other on, off the ice. Uh, but I feel like just getting that relationship and just playing with each other for the last you know, two years, you kind of just you get a feel for each other on the ice. You kind of know where each other are. Um, and we still talk in the ice, but it's just you kind of have that sense in the back of your brain that you know where he is, and um, 
he's helped me out a ton. I think we both we both push each other. We both want to be better, and um, it makes he makes my job a lot easier out there for sure. This is something, and only in person. You know, I can never do it during an interview during a game. Yeah. But I got a call from a very a mutual friend, a, a good friend to both of us, Chris Drury, when you got traded. Yep. And he said, Drip. Brady's going to be devastated because he loved being a New York Ranger. And, you know, you and I immediately hit it off. Yep. You're just a world-class guy. Like How it. hard was that, and was there any moment, Carolina is so different than New York City, that you truly felt part of the Hurricanes, and now you can just feel your excitement of being a Hurricane. Can you really honestly go through that process? Yeah. Um it was definitely really tough. I think uh, you have, you know, you get drafted by a team, you're going up through the ropes, kind of through the organization, uh, doing prospect camps and all this stuff, and rookie camps, and then playing in the minor leagues, and then playing for the Rangers. Um, you just feel, and everyone says this, you feel like you're going to be there forever. And um, there's, I mean, that organization's great. They're all, they're first class. They have great people like Drew, um, you know, leading the way now. Um, but it was tough. I mean, I think we had some great friends in hockey and even outside of hockey in the city that um, I knew it was going to be tough to leave. Um, but when I got down here, I think I've told this before, but stepping into the locker room right away, just the guys that they were so welcoming. And like, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, they, me and Troach came in the same day and right away we were, we felt like we'd been a part of the team for, for a long time, which was, which was really nice and I think the greatest thing or one of the greatest things was when I got traded it was obviously really tough we got we renovated an apartment in the city and yeah. then a week before we were done with it we got traded so that was out that was tough for sure but um no when I got traded I jumped on a flight that night uh actually with David Ayers yeah. who was doing the late night show tour yeah. so I came back with uh David Ayers from New York um played that next day and I think that really helped just kind of getting back into hockey and you know not really thinking at all just uh making the easy transition to being a hurricane and then I've honestly I've I absolutely love being down here I think it's a great organization the guys are amazing like I said um the coaching obviously Rod is amazing and every, everyone in the league knows that um so I, I couldn't have uh, asked for a better situation down here and I reached out to you right after the game, uh, early January, in route to your shovel, yep. Big End Player of the Month. You were the first star against the Calgary Flames, and the Kaniacs were chanting with a passion. <laughs> when you and I did the first star interview, they were chanting your name. Yeah. It's one of the most exciting interviews I've been a part of. I reached out to you as soon as I got home. Yep. Usually I'm right to quick eating, as, and I tell <laughs> because that was special. Yeah, it was. And, tell me about that. It was. Um, well, I had the headset on, so I couldn't really hear it exactly. But I kind of took one ear off because I, I know you were pause, you were pausing, and I heard the crowd making some noise, and I heard them chanting that, and that was special. I mean, I think, um, you know, getting the, the fans have been great, obviously, the whole time. But um, to hear that from them after a game, it's uh, it's pretty special, and um, to have their support, you know, not just with me, but with the team, you can just really feel the passion with them, which uh, we all really enjoy. When you said we were renovating an apartment, uh, your fiance at the time, now your wife, Gracia, yep. um, your high school sweetheart, she's a you know salt of the earth Minnesotan like you. Um, you know, hey, listen, that's way more important than hockey. W yep. What's the the coolest part of, and the most rewarding, special part of being in a, a supportive relationship where you're both pulling on the rope for each other? Yeah, it's uh, well we've. I mean, we've gone through a lot so far just with the move and everything like that and gracious she's a nurse she's still working in New York um, doing like house calls and stuff and going to school at Duke so um, you know, I support I try to support her as much as she supports me I know that you know we move around with with my hockey but I try to do my best to support her and what she wants to do and we've been married for six months now we got a lot long way to go but it's been uh it's been amazing we've known each other since we were you know two or three years old we grew up across the street from each other so um we have a really special relationship and uh she supports me and she's yeah she's the best 
what, what what you want to stay private stays private. But when you, you know you're the shock of the trade, you jump right on a plane. You said playing right away helped. But is there any initial conversation? She was in New York. You were in Carolina. That that you remember her particularly supporting you and saying, you know, hey Brady, let's you know we're gonna we're gonna yeah. enjoy this together. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, I was making. You know, we were sitting on the couch. I know, and I was pretty shook up. I was. I mean. Definitely, just tons of emotions going through my body. Um, calling guys on the team or guys calling me, and um, you know, getting, getting off of a call with a with a teammate, and I kind of I got you know a little emotional and kind of a little sad. And um, she was right there and just saying, yeah, it's all gonna be okay. Like she supports me with everything, and uh, that definitely definitely helped. This is all why I was so excited when the, the Kaniacs were so passionately chanting your name. And you can just see. And, I mean, you're, the reason you get the, the shovel, I mean, you did everything. And you're plus seven. Elevated your assists. Elevated your goals. Your, your chances have been there. Um, the minutes that you play. I, you know, I, I don't look at social media very often, but people, I think, have, they might even have a drinking game. Uh, for me, how many times am I going to talk about Brady Shea's lung capacity? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the big eternal lung. Yeah. Um, is, do you think some of that is just genetic, your ability to handle the, the minutes, the big shifts? There, is there anything in your conditioning for young players that you would suggest? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. I, honestly, I think that um, I do have some, I mean, I've been blessed with I've been able to recover quickly kind of my entire life like whenever I'm playing I feel like going out um, for a shift and I come back to the bench it, I can recover quite quickly um, I think the maybe a little bit the way that I move around the ice the way I skate is a little I'm not putting all my energy into my skating I feel like I'm trying to be as efficient as I can I think that might help a lot but um, so I think it's a mix between maybe my skating and uh, just kind of genetics that I've been able to recover pretty quickly. Not my story. <laughs> I don't recover quickly. There have been a lot of times, thankfully, in the rearview mirror that I could, I'd like to text Gratian and say, can you get me an IV? <laughs> okay. I've been there too. <laughs> couple softies uh, and, you know, because you and I could go on all day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can do an interview in a game with tremendous content. If I was still between the benches, Ron Hainsey was a guy I could talk to right after a shift. He'd give yeah. great content. So I say, hey, Brady, you're having a great hair night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You'll laugh to the ends of the earth. Yep. Where, what, what side of the family does the hair come from? Ooh, uh, I don't know. My dad's got pretty nice hair. Um, my grandpa uh, has pretty nice hair, but my hair is getting a little gray now, so I got to... I'm not going to do anything to it. It's just going to no. it's going to turn gray here and if I don't know who knows how long, but um, yeah, I don't know. I get, hopefully I just don't want to lose it. That's the thing. You know who just called you when I did an interview with him? I compared you to Brett Hedekin and Stanley Cup close friend and teammate. Yeah. And your coach Rod Brindamore, he called you one of the the better people that you'll ever meet. Uh, his hair's going gray. It, it is. <laughs> And, uh, Nothing wrong with that. No, no. Hey, hey, he's pulling it. He's he pulling it off. He is. Yeah, with uh, major mojo. Yep. Uh, one other. Uh, what do you have there? What's the hat? Uh, this is. I ordered this the other week. This is just the 2022 U.S. Open. Which it's was here in Brookline. Uh, it's uh, the upcoming one. Okay. Yeah. So the reason I asked is because um, my friend Manolo, who you're yeah. very aware of, yeah. Manolo. Hey, you legend, <laughs> my Peros. <laughs> don't get nasty. Don't be nasty. Yeah, don't be nasty. <laughs> uh, have, have, if, if Manolo has, have you played Brookline? And, and Manolo, we're going to get a response from you of uh, what your tutelage is on Brookline here in suburban uh, Boston. Yeah. yeah, I have not played it, no. Um, but I've heard it's, it's the, I think it's the course where that Disney movie, the Grace King ever played, yeah. where Shia LaBeouf was shot. So, um, no, I've not played it, but I'd, I'd obviously love to. If you could extract one part of Manolo's game, what would it be? Ooh, he's got a pretty good game. Yeah, he does. His clothes are, his, his style's on point. He's got a good swing. Uh, I don't know. He's got, he's got it going on right now. He does. 
I tried to get him to go on the elusive swordfish hunt, but he said he had to go to uh, Pebble Beach. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad and We didn't catch the fish, but he <laughs> saw the fish that we did catch. It looked like a dinosaur. That's it on Manolo. We are huge fans. You yes. love the guy, don't you? I do. Yeah. I, love, I love watching his videos. I think he's hilarious. Um, finally, this is a special group. Yep. You have a chance to do something special. There are many things that you could point to, but if you were to just pick one, that gives you a chance to do something really special, what would it be? Uh, I would say our, honestly, our team competitiveness. I mean, we really don't, I hate to lose. I mean, we, we don't like, we, what's the, what's the one I'm trying to say here? Uh, we are so competitive. I think even starting with the top guys, like, you know, you got Fishy and Svetch and, you know, all these guys who are young players, but they cannot stand losing. And I think we, throughout the whole lineup is the same way. And um, there's not much panic in our game either. I think when we're down a goal, down two goals, uh, we think we're going to come back and win. There's no, no panic on the bench, really. And obviously, we don't want that to happen. But um, the confidence we have in our group and the way that we play, that the system that Rod and the coaching staff have put, put forward for us, um, you know, I think that, that might be the, the turning point. I think that that's going to be help us in the long run. Well said. And all of that leads uh, for me. Uh, you know, I'm your friend personally, but professionally, Cakewalk Broadcasting. <laughs> Brady, congratulations. Uh, you. You know, I, I, I'm always thrilled to hand out to the shovel, but particularly so. Thank you, man. I Keep appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. We're digging in with trip today, yeah. Today. Yeah. Today, yeah. Today.